Got it. Okay. All right, take it away, Nan. Okay, so we're starting at the end of the presentation just because I want to make sure that this is highlighted twice. And these are the three articles that come up pretty prevalent in a Google search, which is 35 authors using Pinterest for book marketing and inspiration, Pinterest for authors, um, which is another one, and then Pinterest for authors again, a beginner's guide. So I'm always hesitant to have anything that says flat out Pinterest for authors because that's the first title most people use when doing something for Pinterest uh, for authors because it's pretty direct. I didn't animate this simply because I wanted to go through it. Okay, so what I get a lot of is people coming to me saying they don't understand the platform, it's not doing anything for them, and um, why should I even be on there? Because there's BookBub and Goodreads and Wattpad, which are all great places to be, but they aren't designed to generate traffic specifically for you or to specifically sell your books. Whereas being on Goodreads, it's, it's a great plant platform, but it's not really designed to sell your books. Um, okay, so my specialty is helping people on a one-to-one -one basis and helping them kind of see the benefit of doing something for themselves. So um, with that kind of hand-holding, that's kind of how we're doing this. So um, in this workshop, we're going to go over mindset. I don't know what just happened. It just went faster. Okay. Mindset, intention, your action items, your best practices, and the benefits of doing all of this. Okay, so this is a great quote from Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And when you are marketing as an author, this is something that for creatives, it's easy to remember in your writing how you want a scene to feel or you, how you want a character to feel but the minute you move on to marketing for that particular book you forget that those emotions and feelings need to go on and go forward and elicit that same thing when you're trying to reach a new audience and pinterest being such a visual platform more so than instagram even um it's such a visual platform that you have to convey those feelings in what you post or they just forget it. So moving with that in mind, we need to change our mindset a little bit on how we deal with Pinterest. Okay, so most of my people, when they talk about Pinterest or I ask them about Pinterest, they kind of just say, oh, I don't really do much with Pinterest. I just kind of post. And it's easy enough to set up your blog so that when you post on one thing, it'll post to all your social media. And then you have the same thing going to all your social media. But the problem with that is I know with Twitter, what you'll get is like just like a line or a link. Um, with Pinterest, what will happen is maybe there's or you don't have any keywords, you don't have any context, you, it's not going to the right board. And so that can make it less, um, what's that word? That can make it less able to actually help you do what you want to do with it. So when you're dealing with Pinterest, you have to change the mindset of this I, I don't get this, this does nothing for me, to using it for the three basic purposes it made for. So when you go to Facebook, you know you're trying to connect with your fans. When you go to Twitter, you know you're trying to talk to other people in the industry and 
get that net networking connection going on. So when you go to Pinterest, you are trying to visually represent your board. And then you have specific actions that you want to do along with that. Um, okay, I'm gonna, hold on one second. Stop here for one second. Do we have any questions about what we're talking about as far as mindset? Everybody's muted. I can't hear anybody. Are you Beth sorry? I had to unmute myself. Um, I don't see anything in the chat box just yet. Um, if anybody has any questions, the chat box is open. Or just unmute yourself and ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, let me. I muted myself because I'm eating. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I'm just going to share my screen. I don't like I don't like not being able to see everybody. It drives me nuts. Okay. So. Okay. So say you wanted to use Pinterest to increase your visibility. One of the things you have to uh, think about is how that new audience person is going to be looking and searching for your stuff. Um, a lot of authors when they go on Pinterest. What they do is they kind of just post whatever they're interested in, so like their cat or their dog or um, travel, or they just post about their books over and over again, or they um, just throw the book covers up there, um, which it's not a good idea to just throw your book covers up there, and I'll explain why. It's a little thing. Um, and then you have your sales and your, your characters. Sales are an excellent thing to post on Pinterest. People go to Pinterest to buy. So instead of thinking about you, think about the person who uh, you want to find your book. Think about um, how they might like your characters, uh, how they might be interspersed in the worlds that you create, how they would want to share those characters and worlds with their friends. Um, and think about the things that they would love about your books. So let's move this forward. Okay. That, I really don't like this as much as I like. Uh, sorry, this is my first time using Canva. I normally use uh, PowerPoint. Okay. So when you're thinking about your mindset, so are you posting automatically? Are you just kind of posting from your phone? You're just kind of throwing something up there. Are you using keywords? Um, did you bother to write a description? Because those things can really make a dramatic difference in how well your posts do. So Pinterest itself has three great advantages, traffic, sales, and social. You can sell your books directly on Pinterest if you have an independent means of selling them. Most of the time when it comes to selling your books, uh, a lot of authors, especially independent authors are just with Amazon. And so you can't actually link your books to Amazon, but say if you're with Findaway Voices or something like that, and you have a separate means of selling your book, or if you have your books on the Facebook marketplace, you can link to the, that Facebook marketplace, or you can link directly to your own seller's page from Findaway Books, um, which I think most people, I think most people should do that, but that's, just me that people can find the books, they can actively just buy the books. And there are um, rich pins and there are tags in which for you to do that. And you can also sell whatever merchandise you're selling along with your book. Um, the other point of Pinterest is to bring traffic. Pinterest is a great way of establishing links to your website and links to other people's website to get to your website. And I know that sounds kind of convoluted, but one of the things that gives you domain authority is the amount of good links you have to anchor that website. If your website does not have any outgoing links or any inbound links that Google considers um, important, then your ranking will lower will be lower and lower. And 
using Pinterest, it's pretty much the fastest way you can establish links without having to do a whole bunch of SEO crud or even know about it. The best, you put those links up there. If you're, pin, if you're pinning directly from your website, that's going to give you those links without you having to do a whole bunch of hubbub on the back, all of those links from the front. Um, the other thing, Pinterest this year added a social component because it used to be you could just pin and you would see that pin, but now you can message other people about a pin. So this gives you a great social connection. There are a lot of book clubs on Pinterest where people will get on there and they'll pin different things. Like they've had um, different like character art contests to see who could come up with a character that looks uh, closest to or guess the book cover where people would go on Pinterest and try to uh, guess what kind of book cover the artist would have, like what the components would be. And they do this all visually through boards. Um, so it's the social component is within the last six months, but it's still not like Facebook. Like nobody's expecting to see pictures of your grandchildren or anything um, on on Pinterest. And still, most people who go to Pinterest, they have a project or or they're looking for something specifically to buy. So um, that being said, I know what we skipped. Oh, there it is. OK, so your intentions. OK, so on Pinterest, Going okay, so who are you going to reach on Pinterest and why do you want to reach them? Well, 42% of Pinterest users are women and then we have our 15% men, which this statistic is from 2008 and I'm telling you the amount of men on Pinterest has drastically increased with COVID and such. Um, a lot of it have gone on Pinterest to set up um, boards for projects like cleaning out garage, so solar projects, yard work, um, the guard, the guard, the gardening and lawn work and uh, man cave section on Pinterest has kind of exploded. Um, even um, the she shed section, I know several of the other um, Pinterest account managers that I know have, they have, you know, boards devoted to she sheds and man caves. Um, so those are really huge. So our next here. Answers the question. Why? This answers the question why. 68% of new product, 68% uh, of pinners, that's the people on Pinterest, have discovered new products on Pinterest. So your book could be discovered by one of these people, by one of these 68% of new pinners, they can discover your books simply through Pinterest. So how do you take action? How do you how do you make this into a reality? Okay, so your basic actions, of course, is having a profile that actually says what you do, and having a profile that is connected to your website so that it's verified. And I'm going to assume here that you have a business account. A lot of people have a business account and forget to claim it. Um, Pinterest says claim. And uh, that just means that you verify that you're an actual user. Um, and then it also has um, two new features that are great. You can bulk load your blog posts, um, images from your blog directly on the Pinterest once you've claimed it, which is, you know, great time saver. And then it has a couple of other social media. Um, I think you can link your Instagram and Etsy and Shopify, which most of the time, most, most people have Instagram, so that's a great one to link here. Okay, now you, if you're not using the enhanced features, then you should. The basic, in, the basic features are your links. Every single post that you have for Pinterest should link back out to your website or to your books. Um, if they're not linking out to somewhere, then there's really no point in posting on Pinterest because it's not going to do you any good. You can use and links are simple. If you if you post from your website directly from your website, then it'll 
whenever somebody clicks on that post, it's going to take them back to your website without you having done anything. And then your tag. Um, you can directly turn any post or any picture into a shopping page um, just by adding a tag. And then there's rich pins. Now, rich pins are more complicated. Um, you actually have to apply for them. And I've heard some chatter uh, in the Pinterest groups that, that uh, people aren't getting their, their rich pins. So, um, but if you use them, they're amazing because they bring up the articles, they bring, they bring in and send that back to you. So if you can, I would highly suggest you, if you are not technical, if I, if you are not technical, then I wouldn't worry about it. I would start using your links and your tags correctly and then worry about moving into rich pins. Um, and then you, using your base, basic SEO practices, using your key, lead, key, key keywords and your description on every single pin. Um, you can, if you want, Pinterest algorithm can read the actual image. So having the, whatever writing you put on the actual image, it's gonna pull those keywords. And I have an example of how this can be good and how this can be bad later on. Okay. Sorry, this can be here. There we go. All right. Okay, so when you're taking action, look at your profile and decide what you do. So if you're a YA author, it needs to be in your profile. If you are a script writer or you're planning to become a script writer, it should be in your profile. It should just say author, YA author, script writer, so that people know exactly what you do. And if people search for, say, a script writer, you're going to be in the running to be in that list to be suggested. Okay, then you have your enhanced features. Are you pinning directly from your website? Are you pinning directly? Are you pinning your books directly from other websites? Um, are you using those tags? Are you using those links? Are you using your keywords? Okay, best practices when you're doing all of this. Okay, I want to make Stay. There we go. Okay. Okay. So your three best practices are to post with intention, use your smart goals, and keep it professional. These three things are very simple. You don't have to go out of your way to do them. When you make a post, you need to make sure you know what you're doing with that post. If the goal of that post is just to get social with the people who are following you then you can just simply make sure that you ask a comment or make sure that when you post that post, you, you um, well, the thing about Pinterest is Pinterest always shows anybody who's in your feed your post. So it's pretty social as long as you're posting regularly and talking to other people. Um, your Smart goals, now that's a little bit different. So if you have a actual campaign with your books, that's where your smart goals are gonna come in. Or if you're trying to increase traffic to your website to increase your sales, that's gonna be different. So for your smart goals, that simply means be specific, make sure it's measurable, um, make sure it's achievable and relevant, and make sure you have a time bound on there so you know when to look. So what I would suggest is if you were doing this, is say you were having a book launch, if you were launching your book in October and you wanted to increase um, eyes on it, so you want to increase traffic to that book, um, then that would be your be specific. Um, so you're want, you want to increase traffic by say um, 200 views. You want to make sure that number is measurable, which it is with the Pinterest analytics. You can go in and measure how many views that book is getting. Um, and then you can make sure that it's relevant to you. So the more views you get on your book, the more possible you have for them to click. Now, 
some of the promoted stuff you can track like clicks and saves, but it tells you with the non promoted stuff um, what your clicks and saves are. And then you want to make sure you give it that time bound, which would probably be around the time you actually launch the book. Um, which you never want to have a goal where you don't have a time bound on it because then it's not really a goal. It's just something you kind of want to achieve. Okay. So keep it professional. This is the three things to keep it professional always. Show up. I mean, if you are using Pinterest, your best bet is to consistently pin. So when you do a blog article, when you publish a book, you want to make sure you have a pin for that. And the rule is three to five Pinterest images um, per, per blog post. Um, video does exceedingly well. So if you link um, and you can post a YouTube video directly from YouTube to Pinterest and it actually does increase your traffic. And then you want to follow up on it. So if you have, if it's something where you're asking questions or you're talking, you want to make sure you look, you look that up, find out, find out if people have actually looked at it or if they're responding to it. And if it's a giveaway or something, just follow through. That as long as you show up, follow through and I'm uh, sorry, show up, follow up and follow through, people are going to see you as a professional and that's going to elevate how they treat you, period. They're going to know that you're not just some fly by night person who published a book, right? You are a professional author. Um, so how you could tell these things are working. Now, they don't, you don't have to be 100% strict about all this. You can simply look and see if people are saving your stuff, their pins. Um, you can see if people are clicking through. You can look at the behavior of the people looking at your pins. Uh, Pinterest is very good about showing you that. Like, are they giving you feedback? Um, are they uh, suggesting your pins? If Pinterest is recommending your pins, you're doing something right because Pinterest is very picky about pins that they recommend. But once they start recommending your pins, you will see a dramatic uptick in traffic. Um, the big thing you want on Pinterest is the saves. And I know that sounds weird, but what you're wanting is for people to save your pin, which is even more important because the click through to your website, that's great. They're gonna click through your website, find you, and that's wonderful. But when they save your pin to one of their boards, that means instead of just having, let's say you have 46 followers, now your pin goes to their board and now they're 46 followers see you. And if one of those three people does your pin, so now you have your 46, their 46, and the next 46, and the next 46. So you kind of see where I'm going with this. It's like a gigantic chain of events that moves kind of forward. Um, hold on, I have to go back. So I guess I think we'll see who's all still on the thing. You got to meet Denise today. Um, and so I was looking at her account and she has a really awesome Pinterest account. And I would almost say she only has one itty bitty problem with her account that I would think would drastically help her on her traffic. So, um, so I'm going to ask Denisha directly why, why she's on Pinterest. Can you unmute yourself and answer? I was um, originally just joined, well, I joined Pinterest just to, for my own personal reasons. I really wasn't looking at it from a writer, author, promotional standpoint. I was looking at it as I have pins for stuff about kids. I have pins about workouts. I have pins. I really wasn't looking at it in that way. But after we had that call the one day um, when we were on the call and you were saying the different ways that Pinterest is valuable in that aspect. I just started trying to update my Pinterest. I had no idea what I was doing. So I just started putting my website on all my pins, but I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to trying to do it from a writer author standpoint that would benefit me in that way. So. Can I show your account? Like from- you show my account? Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask before I do this. Okay, so before we start, like I, 
first of all, your your pins are great. Like you, you've got a really good foundation. Um, I like they were pulling up with you. Hold on, I have to stop sharing for a second. So um, we're gonna answer this next question, um, how you can increase your results, like what would make it better? Um, so I just have to get, I have to stop sharing my screen for just a second here. I didn't leave you, Nan. I had to go take care of something real quick. That's fine. We're, we're, I'm trying to, there we go. I had to get out of Canva. Okay. Let's see if this does it because I am not on my computer that has all the lovely cookies saved. I just realized I had to sign in. No, there. Don't go for that one. Okay, we'll show this one. This is my, um, we're going to be under my greatly, greatly neglected account for my other business. Let me show my screen again. Hold on, let me find you first. Clayton has a question, Nan. What's the question? It says, while we are figuring things out, will there be recorded version of the influence panel, influencer panel? I was tragically unable to attend. Yes, we did record it. Yes. I just have to figure out where it went. And it won't be edited because I suck at editing. Um, yeah, it's going to be unedited. You're going to get the raw footage. Yeah, just like you were there with us. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going for realism. Sort of. Okay, so here is my screen. Here we go. Let me present, um, share my screen again. Are there any other questions while she's setting up? Folks, just put them in the chat box. And I'm not disappearing on anybody. I just had to take care of something on my end. So. Okay. And if you can also ask me about other platforms too. If you have a Google question or if you have an SEO question, you can ask me about that too. Because believe it or not, it's actually related. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, Nan knows a lot about SEO. She does. She okay, knows a so ton. For those of you who don't know what SEO is, search engine optimization. Okay. So this is Denisha's. I highly recommend you follow it. I like her, her thing. Um, so you see here, what they, you put recently will come up in the background unless you put in your own background. Um, just, I don't know why they do that, but they do. Okay, so I only found one itty bitty tiny problem with Denisha's stuff. And here, where's that? this one okay so it's wanting me to save it to me but I, when i click on the post so i'm looking at this, this post and it's awesome right it's a quote from one of her characters from her books and it looks to me i can tell that that's what it is but to pinterest this is an awesome workout post so it thinks this is a workout post because all it has is rookie mistakes, which seems like an athlete who's making mistakes. That's all it's got to go on is rookie mistakes, right? So it goes down here and this is what it puts it next to. So anybody who's like working out or making sure they don't wanna make any workout mistakes, this is what it's gonna be. Do y'all see what the problem is? I can't hear y'all so, but um, yes, I see the problem. It takes you to work out stuff rather than her book. Yeah, she. Well, I think she to work out. Denisha said in the chat box. She said, "I see the problem." She didn't realize it. No, and and and. Okay, I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> sorry. 
sorry. I gotta scroll up before I go down the rabbit hole. Um, Don't okay. go down so the rabbit when hole. You, I know, right? <laughs> it was just really interesting. So when you're looking, when you're when you're when you put your your post on there, like it it can it they they can pull your um, information from the page, but for the most part, they take the information from how you um, describe the post. So if you put in that it's a book, then they're going to put it with other books. If you so like book characters even better than rookie mistakes because you want it associated with other books. Like I've had people just flat out put whatever like whatever they feel their book is like, they put that next to it and then that it'll pull up that way because you want Pinterest really wants to recommend as much as possible. So they have to have an idea and since they don't know what this is, they're gonna they like there's no like mention of romance or anything. And even from this, it still looks more like an athlete than anything else. So that is that's why I say, I know this sounds horrible, but with Pinterest, one of the great things that you can do is like these posts that you have, these are awesome. Um, because it flat out kind of tells Pinterest, hey, I, you got Regina King on here. I want more stuff that's related to this whole like thing. So you see how much better all the group stuff is. So if it's, it's looking for a post or something, it even has Regina King on here, like flat out um listing her there so it's automatically associating that post with the person you put there so whenever you're that's what i'm telling people with with pinterest you can simply elevate how much pinterest refers you refers you simply by filling out that comment um and a lot of times, I think with Pinterest, people worry too much about how many people are following them, how many people are, where it's, it's really not that machine. Like with Pinterest, you need to be concentrated on sales and traffic. Like there's, Pinterest can give you more traffic than Google for cheaper. Because at some point with Google, to reach a higher level, you have to pay. Whereas with Pinterest, there are, system is set up that you really don't have to pay. Now it's getting, since they've gone public, um, the promoted pins do get more precedent, but promoted pins are just like regular pins in the sense that how they recommend those promoted pins, like they'll get it out in front of more people. But if, let's say if Regina, Regina King had a promoted pin and your pin had been looked at a lot, what they would do is they give that promoted pin first, but yours is related. So it's gonna be down there at the bottom for that person to find if they're really kind of scrolling through the rabbit hole and, and looking there. So when you're looking at Pinterest, you wanna think in terms of what can I put my stuff next to to get that person to look at it. That's why group boards work so well. Um, Tailwind has tribes that you can use and where you're pinning on other people's boards and getting their traffic back to yours. Um, there are, believe it or not, there are, it's like Instagram, there are groups off of Pinterest and like Facebook groups where, that you can go to. I recommend just using a couple of group boards. You can even form a group board with other authors. Um, and so if somebody signs up for a group board, every single pin that's on that board is coming up in that person's feed. Pinterest does not limit what people see in their feed. If you subscribe to something, it gives you all of it and then it recommends more because Pinterest wants you to have as much together as possible. So if you are using group boards, if you are using or group boards or tribes, uh, I highly, if you, if you are focused on Pinterest and Instagram, I would highly recommend Tailwind. Tailwind's great. I use Canva because I like to play on Canva um, and they've added, so you, can, you can't really view Instagram so much on Canva as much as you can Pinterest. 
but you got to remember to always fill in those um, that description because it's going to help you. And if you can get your stuff with Pinterest, you want to look at getting your stuff next to that next author. So say um, you're, let's say you're a YA author and you know that Stephanie Meyer's book is hot and you, you wrote something with vampires too, but it's, you know, it's your own spin on things, right? So, but you want, you think that that book lover or that person who could be looking for Stephanie Meyer's book would enjoy your book. So you want to use the same keywords and phrases that would bring bring your stuff closer to her stuff. So that person would be like, oh, well, let me look at this person. So I have questions. Yeah, um, Denisha missed, it got, she got kicked out at one point and she said she needed to know how um, you were discussing how she needed to fix the description of her pen. For that particular description, she needs on there something about it being a book character. Nothing in okay. there a book character. Um, a good way to write that would be a quote from, like if you said, a quote from, because Pinterest gives you 500 words, right? Or 500 characters, I think. It's 500 something. So you can say a quote from Sebastian from the particular, that specific book that it's in. Um, and then the other thing is, or, or you can say a romance novel quote, and then it's gonna, instead of bringing up fitness stuff, it's gonna try to bring up romance novels that your book would be next to. You know, you want that, you, you want to use those keywords. You can use keywords or hashtags in there. Um, I recommend keywords more so than hashtags um, because when Google searches Pinterest, it's going to pick up the keywords first. So having your book name next to the keyword helps a lot. You don't want to stuff it with too many keywords. You want to keep it simple. You know, book, character, uh, quote, especially quote, because quotes are popular um, about that. And that would help that come up a lot sooner and be in the correct space. Any more questions? Uh, not, not now. Does anyone have any questions so far? Or are y'all good? Well, nobody seems to be saying anything just yet. OK. All right, uh, can everybody unmute themselves? Okay, um, I can unmute everybody. Unmute everybody, can we unmute and, and you don't have to show us who you are, but let's unmute and, and talk for a second. Okay. Um, uh, I'm trying. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, everybody's on. My question is, how are y'all using Pinterest now? Like, like, you want to go first? How are you using Pinterest? Uh, me? Yeah, how are you using Pinterest? Uh, I am not. I'm not using Pinterest at all. Um, I am not a huge fan of social media. So I'm pretty much on like LinkedIn. Um, and I'm trying to seek other ways to market on social media. So I thought maybe Pinterest. Uh, I'm not sure. What? books do you write? Uh, horror fiction. Oh, horror. well, yeah. Pinterest would be great for you. Um, if you did, if you started, and here's the other thing, if you're not big in the social media, I highly recommend Pinterest because it's not every day. I just knocked my earring off. Um, okay, so there are people who pin every day, um, but here's the thing. For most people, you can pin once a month and be fine. Uh, you don't have to pin every day. You can pin like according to a season or according to your books and not have to be on there. It's not Facebook. You don't have to go on there every day and answer comments and questions and stuff like that. It's, it's much easier. Um, and I would highly recommend if you're going to do horror on Pinterest, Pinterest is uh, 45 days out. So people start looking, let's say October's coming up, 45 days ahead of that, people will start searching for costumes. They'll start searching for horror novels, fiction. Um, here's Anthony, and, which is not horror. I know he's not horror, but does um, kind of creature type things. 
Which and can be a little scary the first couple of times. Super famous horror writer. Stephen King. Stephen King has one of those. I highly recommend kind of looking at their stuff. But yeah. So uh, what about you, Iris? I always get the ones with Sherry. Is Iris there? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not using it adequately <laughs> at all. Okay. What kind of, what genre are you in? This one. Um, I'm in YA, romantic mysteries, humorous mysteries, cozy mysteries. So do you post like funny stuff to go along with your stuff or you just stick to the, the common boards? Uh, I'm not even really sure what to put on my boards. Uh, I've looked at the other authors' boards, mostly the inspiration boards, but I would prefer to put like uh, snippets of of funny conversation from the books. You would get more funny traffic. Quotes. Yeah, that the, the snippets of conversation, you get more traffic with that. Um, quote do really well, lists always do well. Um, if you did like just snippets of the conversation or if you had like, if you had a comic that you thought your characters would like, that would do well too. Um, anything bright and funny is gonna do really well on Pinterest. Um, what about you, Dor? Is it Dori? Dori, it is. Okay. Like so a fish. Are you using Pinterest? A fish, you know. Just, just, never mind. Anyway, um, I know what you're talking about. I've got three kids. <laughs> I I used it a long time ago, but it was basically when we were doing those boards, you know, like music groups and that. I had not even thought about using it as far as um for authors. I, I write for middle grade and young adult, and this would be great. I'm going to be putting it into effect shortly. Okay, well, and the thing you have to remember is, I didn't put this in the report because I, it's a, it's, I don't want to get too many numbers, but mm -hmm. Pinterest is, was the third largest search engine, but lately um, Google and Pinterest are all competing for that spot. And so uh -huh. a lot of people, especially if you're writing for middle grade, um, if you notice that age group, they search by pictures. So having pictures and visual representations of your books, um, unlike Instagram and Facebook, when you put a picture on, on Pinterest, please remember to have it formatted correctly, have your alt text filled out. It will be pulled up a lot faster. And okay. so your ranking for your website just, um, just increases without you having to really work at it. So. Okay, what about you, Denisha? What, what, um, I forgot my question. Okay, so what do you want to use Pinterest for now? Like, what would your intention be for using Pinterest? For well, since, well, since the conversation and the presentation, um, I see how um, vital it can be to help drive traffic to your website and to your books to open yourself up to a wider audience. So um, I'm going to try to go in and fix it to add like description, more description to the pins and try to find a unique, unique way to um, basically help myself become a more part of the community. Cause I had no idea it had such um, influence with the algorithm. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I thought everyone just went to Pinterest just to learn how to make a recipe. <laughs> That's or what to give to the teacher. <laughs> when it's time to do a teacher's gift. <laughs> I never knew anyone used it for promotional marketing or purposes in regards to writing. Okay, so let me let me share this with you. Um, okay. I, in the past five years, I had two floods, two children, and a fire. And so we've had to rebuild our house several times. Wow. Oh, wow. And Pinterest has a feature where you can take your phone and go go into Pinterest and you can start building a board just by taking pictures and uploading it to your board. And people can do this in bookstores too. I've seen book hoarders who go in and they're like, oh, I don't like this book, I don't remember that for later. And then it'll bring up whatever's attached to that, that image. So if you have like Nora Roberts, she's got a lot of Celtic stuff attached. So it immediately starts bringing up Celtic stuff. It's the Pinterest lens thing. Um, it's not as popular because of COVID, but it's still there and people still use it so much. So like 
you have to remember Pinterest is that dreamer state for people who are going to put stuff together. So you kind of have to look from that, that point of view, like how are they going to be attaching this? You know, if, if, if they're looking for romance, then I want my stuff attached to different scenarios, different couples, whereas you don't want them attaching it to like fitness. So um, you can kind of move along that way. Um, is there more or is it just us? No, it's just us. Um, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I'm talking to everybody and not just, you know, not ignoring anything. No, anybody. yeah. Deb had to go and I don't know what happened to everybody else. Well, we're, with four o'clock, we're, we're pretty much done. If you guys have any problems, um, feel free to email me and I'll be happy to answer your questions via email. Um, especially if you have issues with keywords and just um, working on your Pinterest. Um, and also let me know, let me know what your Pinterest handle is and we'll follow you. Because um, that's, that's like another thing is building up that, that network. And remember, you can link. I know, I, like I said, I use Canva. And so I just go straight there. But if you're interested in group boards or in tribes, Tailwind, use Tailwind. And it's ironically, Tailwind and Canva are about the same price. They're about 120 bucks a year. So it's not too bad. Um, and, but the caveat is the Tailwind is 120 bucks for, for um, interest. And then it's 120 bucks for interest. So it's really like 200 bucks. But nobody else has a price. Um, and I think for, for Tailwind, this year, they posted what's called a LinkedIn bio, which I don't know if, if you're an Instagram user, you're familiar with the fact that Instagram gives you one link if you have less than 10,000 followers. So that one link, uh, most people use Linktree, which is free, or use Later, which is like the LinkedIn bio where you have a picture and it's attached. Um, Tailwind has a very similar product that comes along with that. So either one of those, and if you need help with those two, you can email us and we'll try to answer your question. Um, you can reach me at the author encounter email, um, which is uh, the author encounter at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. I put it in the chat box. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, guys. and next week on Friday, November 13th at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have literary agent Hannah Van Vels from Bill Castro. So be sure to join us. I'm going to be interviewing her. Right. And we should have look up her look up her manuscript um, wish list if you want to pitch to her. She primarily, I think she primarily takes YA and adult, but um, she has a wide variety of interests. I don't know if she does horror, Clayton, but she might. You can check it out. Worth looking for sure. Thank you. It is. She's so sweet. She's so nice. Y'all are going to love her. Okay. Um, and will that one be recorded as well? Are they always recorded? Um, we don't always record. I don't know if we're going to record that one or not. Okay. We're probably going to record the one that's in December. Mm -hmm. um, in December, I am interviewing Meg Lafarve, who works for Pixar. Mm -hmm. She is a screenwriter. She did The Good Dinosaur, and she worked on Inside Out. She also worked for Jodie Foster, um, mid other myriad of things. Wow. She is a one woman show um so i'm going to be interviewing her we also have a workshop coming up in december with victoria vane for all of you historical novel folks she makes um she does a lot of um custom work and she has done a lot of i uh, think regency or historical romance or whatever she's done a lot of that she has a little shop in um I think she's in, where is she? Either North or South Carolina. I always get, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot of content coming up. So if you're not members yet, 
do join. It's free for published authors. For readers, we're running a special right now. Um, if you're not yet published, but you're working towards publication, join as a reader for $15. We have a 25% off discount right now, just for November for NaNoWriMo. And then once you're published, we can transfer you into having an author membership. So, uh, what about self-published? Yes, we do accept self-published authors too. As long as you have an ISBN number on your book, um, that's what matters. Yeah, the ISBN number, that's what matters. Mostly because it's easier for us to promote you if you have an ISBN number. Um, we have, I know we're a very young company, but we are gaining tra traction in other countries. And I know in India and Canada, if you don't have an ISBN number, it's really hard to, to push those books. So we want to make sure that whoever we're promoting, we can promote them. So we want you to have more than just the KDP number. So, um, but like, like I said, we're young, we're, 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 um, I guess enthusiastic. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the word. Yes. Nan and I, Nan and I are like yin and yang. Uh, we really play off each other, and our primary goal is engagement. So, sitting here talking with y'all right now—that's really important. We're trying to help you get those super fans, those people who will buy absolutely everything you put out and adore you and want to follow you and like own, help you name your dogs or something. Um, we're building right now we're building we're trying we're gonna after this um we're trying to we're gonna focus on building up our network so that we can do uh releases uh release like cover releases and blasts and stuff we're not gonna do reviews but we will have a number of reviewers with us um and then we're also trying to um get some deals with some publishers and such um, our ultimate goal is to be able to promote you without you having to do a lot of work. So we're set up to do like, if you need, if you need somebody to organize a giveaway for you and you come to us and we can do that for you. Um, if you need to, we, you know, we want to be able to do promotional services for you. Um, it's all on the author services page, which is only there if you are a member. Um, right. As, but, as of right now, we're just building these things and we're hoping to have them soon. Right, and um, Deb Ewing, who was in some of the earlier workshops, she is one of our supporter members and she is a freelance editor. Mm. So we will be promoting her services as well as Stacy Jubja, who did the editing workshop. So we have those two who are members and um, Hannah Van Vels, who I'm gonna be interviewing is working on um, we're trying to get her to become one of our supporter members as a literary agent so that we can, you know, maybe get in with some other agents and stuff so that yeah, we can we help. Interviews with agents. What? I, I, I said, I, we hope to have more interviews with other agents. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have another agent <laughs> that I'm friends with that I will talk to. I don't personally have an agent yet. I'm in the same boat as some of y'all who want to get more visibility or want to go that traditional route and want to have that agent who can help direct your um i would, yes. say, I would say if you are if, if if you have time i i opened it up it'll be available all day today so later today if you want to watch the um done by christmas um workshop that bethany did that was mine excellent excellent and I would especially recommend it because um, you get to you get to meet Chris J. Hudson, and he he's is a, a member actor. too. Yes, he's a member and he's a voice actor, and um, he does books. Right now, he's kind of focused on on um, book trailers and such, but he's got a plethora of voices that you kind of get to hear, um, and you can kind of kind of see. And at some point, we'll probably do another uh, workshop with Chris, but. Um, if yeah, I gotta, I gotta talk to him. Audio, that's a great one. Yeah, and the, the other thing is we take, in that workshop, we take you step by step through the process of producing an audiobook. And um, 
and we talk about all of that. And um, there was something I was going to say, and it slipped my mind. <laughs> That's what happens when, uh, when you're trying to think. Um, but yeah, we have so much content coming up. And the goal for us is to really help you career-wise. Uh, when at a reader level, the, those who join at the reader level are ones that we're hoping to help them become super fans, really get in, really get to know our author members. And as at the author level, we're trying to help you continue your career. So we're not gonna tell you how to write or how to write. We're going to help you gain that visibility, that engagement, those, um, those events that are not always the easiest to get into. We're gonna create ones where you can be featured. So that's what we're working on currently. So I hope you guys had fun today. And yeah. I hope you come join us for some more events. I hope it was worth it. There was a little bit of a problem, but I'm, I'm happy with it. I feel like it was a success. So. And Denisha is one of our authors. She, she is an author member. She's our featured author, author for this event. So um, she... Um, Denisha, unmute yourself and tell them where they can find you. Um, you can find me on DS, dslittle.com, um, at dlittlewriter on all social media. Okay, awesome. And you, if you look up our Facebook or our Twitter, you'll see where we did some, we featured her quotes and things. Thank you. You're welcome. You've been so great, Denisha. All right, guys, I'm gonna end the interview. I'm gonna end Any other interview. questions before we go? Is everybody cool? Okay, great. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye-bye.